Hey, this is Mike. Here's a 2014 Dodge Charger. Now, it's late in the year in 2014, and we just got that, this one in, so it's not anything that's been sitting on the lot. Um, hadn't even been washed since it came off the truck. But um, the reason why I'm doing the video on the 14, even though I've done other ones, is because this one has the Black Sport appearance package. And on the SXT, that just looks really awesome. I mean, the main thing that kind of pops out of these um, solid aluminum painted wheels, there's no plastic covers on those 20 inch wheels, they really stand out. You've got the, the black grill here, blacked out grill, and you have a black spoiler. Now normally the spoiler would match the car as far as the same color, but this one's black in contrast to the to the white car. And then you've got this. I mean it's just I, I, I like the black and white sporty look myself, so it just kind of stood out. But anyway, um, one of the features that this car has, it has a proximity key and it also has a remote start. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. Now this one has a 3.6 liter V6 which gives you 31 miles per gallon on the highway. Just kind of walk around here so you can get an idea of what it looks like. But it is a sporty looking car. Only thing, which I'll show you when we get inside, the only thing I was kind of surprised it doesn't have sport mode. It just has low, but it does have the 8 speed transmission. And um, it's the, the electric shifter. So now that it started, um, I'm going to go ahead and, before I get inside, I'm going to go ahead and open up the trunk. Show you there. A little bit of wet from the dew this morning. But here is the inside of the trunk. And those seats do fold down, just in case you need to have some extra room. Under here is your spare tire and your battery. Now look at the size of that battery. There's your little funnel right here for um, your capless fuel input, I guess you could say. I'll probably do a special video on the that capless design because it's a little bit more than just missing a cap. It's a little bit more to it. So now that I show you the trunk, I'm just going to go ahead and put the key in my pocket and it's going to stay there because I don't need it to get in to unlock the doors. I just put my hand here, doors unlock. Start here in the back. There's the back door. Here's the back seats. To fold down the seats, there's a little strap right here. Which just got this seat belt for the center passenger hook so it's, it's locked right now so let me go on the other side okay let's try this again that's how you do it. this is a little strap here unlocks the back seat same thing on the other side but the seat belt is um, kind of giving me some trouble there which I'll have to, I'll do the mess with it later Here's the uh, center console armrest, and it has a some cup holders. You got a power supply back here as well some as well as vents. Decent amount of leg room in the back. Front seats all the way back, so you can give you an idea. It still has pretty decent amount of leg room. All right, let's move around back to the driver's door. This one does have the heated side mirrors. Now, if I wanted to relock the doors, I could just push this button. So, unlocking it, put your hand here, lock it, push the button. That way you never have to take the key out of your pocket unless you want to use the remote start feature. Now, here's the inside of the driver door. Here's the hidden fuel cap button there. It's, it's really conveniently located, but if you kind of, first time, if you don't know where it is, then it's kind of hard to find. Let's go ahead and show you that. There's the capless design. You can use E85 if you want. 
see it's kind of reminding you hey there's no cap so don't bother looking for it and it does remind you that it, you will need a a that little funnel on the back in order to um, put gas in it from a gas can so you got the normal door lock controls window controls and the side mirror adjustments there it does have a power driver seat cloth interior and in black automatic headlights hop in new cars have it they, each one of them has like their own unique smell to them so since I use a remote start it's telling me I still have to push the button here to turn everything on and you can see it's flashing so I'm gonna push that all right so now everything's on now here's the steering wheel this one has leather wrapped and stitched These cruise control buttons are on this side on the back you have a volume button for the radio you can change the stations on this side I'm gonna turn the volume back down and you have a voice recognition button once you pair your cell phone the voice recognition button basically you can tune to certain stations you can also call certain people same thing with the phone button you can push that once your phone's paired and say call somebody in your phone book and it'll call them and through your Bluetooth system now these buttons here correspond to this menu here between the gauges so right now I can scroll up and down Kind of the default screen is the vehicle speed, gives you a digital speedometer. So I'm going to go back out of that and go into, um, let's see here, where's it at? Go down. Tire pressure, check that out. I'm going to go down, vehicle info. I'm go into that because that gives me all kinds of cool information temperatures and pressures, and it gives me like a graphic display of. You know, basically like a thermometer look or, or a pressure gauge, stuff like that. And you can always get your fuel economy information here. Now this vehicle only has five miles on it, so it's not much to go on as far as a um, an estimated gas mileage average. A lot of it's uh, idling and stuff like that. But anyway, there's your... Uh, there's your little menu system there. Now I'm going to put it back to vehicle speed. The rest of your gauges are pretty standard. You know, they do have a pretty cool uh, sporty look to them. You got the Dodge emblem there. Alright, so here's your 8.4 inch touchscreen. And uh, this one does not have a navigation. Let me see if it's... Um, if it says, I'm looking at the window sticker here, if it says nav ready, then you can upgrade it to, to have navigation on the touchscreen. Not seeing it there, but um, now right here is your optional equipment. This is where I was talking about the black sport appearance group. There's what it includes there. And I wasn't lying about the 31 on the highway. There's the actual fuel economy. Five-star crash rating. I'm going to try to put that stuff in the description of the video. But anyways, your touch screen here, your radio, does have satellite radio. And when you buy it new, it comes with a one-year subscription for free. And this is your player. It does have a CD player still. Some of them don't. Uh, some cars are kind of leaving that out now. This one has a CD player. It also has the uh, SD card input here as well. So you can choose source. It does have a USB port, which I'll show you in a second. You can use Bluetooth once your phone's paired, and you have auxiliary input as well. So there's how, there's different ways to uh, play music on the system because CDs are kind of phasing out. So I mean, you could put SD card in here and play I don't know thousands of songs on it. And you never kind of use it as a little mini hard drive controls this is where you find your heated seats 
uh, for both your driver and passengers. No heated seats in the rear though. And you can turn the screen off if it's just get, you know distracting you from your driving. Safety first. So there, that's what your controls are. All right, let's go to climate. Now you can adjust your fan speed, your temperature on the driver and passenger, where you want the air to blow and all that cool stuff. You can sync both of them here if you want. Now you do have your redundant buttons down here for your radio as well as your climate control. Right here is where you'll find your phone. Once your phone's paired, you'll have your phone book, recent calls. You can actually dial out with a keypad and um, stuff like that. And also, if you wanted to have a tr private conversation, somebody calls you up and you start talking to them through the system, you can always hit this transfer button and it'll transfer it back to your, your phone itself. And that way you can have a private conversation with if you have other people in the vehicle. Settings. Uh, this is where your you know you can change certain settings like your doors and locks, uh, sounding horns, flashing lights, stuff like that. Go back to radio. So there's your your button. Your you know of course you have regular tune and, and volume knobs down here. In addition to your, your the ones on the steering wheel, your fan can, speed is here. Your temperature speed is here. Where you want the air air to blow and stuff like that. Power supply down here, a little pocket, pocket there, like a pen holder or a phone holder or something there. And this is your eight-speed transmission shifter. Now it doesn't slide like a normal shifter. You kind of just kind of bump it down like that. And it always goes back to the center position. You can tell what gear you're in. This right here, I know the sun sun's shining on it, but you can see where it's illuminated. It'll be illuminated as well as up here. You can tell what gear you're in. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it down in drive just to show you. Now, if I wanted to put it in low, which basically just puts it in a lower gear than whatever gear you're in at the moment, um, you just go down one more time and it switches their spot there. There's no indicator here on which one it is. It's just DL there, but here I can now to go back and drive I just go down down again not up down and it, and it just kind of I go down down see how it just kind of switches and then I go up to go to park so that's how that that uh, electric shifter works eight speed transmission that's part of the reason why you're getting really good gas mileage with a vehicle this size and weight and horsepower and everything it's almost 300 horsepower this v6 now here's like a little roll top desk slider thing and it has your cup holders underneath and there's some uh, ambient lights kind of dim you can't really see them during the day um, hopefully I'll do one at starting to get dark earlier so hopefully I'll be able to do a video um, of what these vehicles look like at nighttime so you can kind of see so here's your armrest this lifts up and you've got like a felt lined pocket here you got this little tray that comes out and you've got a power supply in there as well as your USB and auxiliary inputs. Glow compartment is here and you've got a top portion and a bottom portion. Rear view mirror is an auto dim rear view mirror. See the little light sensor here and it will um, dim when somebody's behind you with their high beams on or something it'll it'll make it to where it's not as bright in your face there's a place to put your sunglasses you got tap lights here and here garage door controls are here once you pair it to your garage door here's a mirror with the lights got a little slidery thing out here to kind of help out with blocking the sun same thing on this side See what it looks like back there. All right, let's look underneath the hood.
3.6 liter Pentastar V6. Now it does have VVT system to help you give you more gas mileage and more horsepower. If you don't know what VVT is, you can kind of check out HowStuffWorks.com or you know one of the informational websites because um, it's a little technical and I don't think I do it justice trying to explain it. But hopefully we'll have some 15s to look at shortly. But um, there's another 14 for you. And um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the comment section. My email address and my phone number will be in the description. And um, if you want to, you can send me a text message on my phone number. And that would be more convenient. If you have to talk to me in person, just leave a message. I usually have to call you back on that one. But anyway, see you next time.